Now the next story is about Mukesh, which we have seen, who wanted to become a motor. Uh, you know, he wanted to drive a car. He wanted to become a motor mechanic. And whereas he is living in Ferozabad, and his family from generations had been into the bangle making industry. So let's start with the summary of the second story. I want to drive a car. Mukesh wants to be his own master. So Mukesh is based in Ferozabad, which is famous in the world for its bangles, glass bangles. Here many families or most of the families from generations have been working in the bangle making industry. But Mukesh on the contrary wants to be a motor mechanic and he wants to learn to drive a car. So let's see the story. Here begins the second story. It is based in Firozabad and the author meets Mukesh who insists on being his own master. Why? Because he wishes to be a motor mechanic. Annie's ask him if he knows anything about cars and Mukesh replies that he wants to learn to drive a car. The author feels that his dream is like a mirage amidst the dusty streets of Ferozabad. Why? Mirage is something that is too real to happen. Yes, too real to happen. That's what the author feels that probably the child is dreaming. But in the situation in the streets of Ferozabad where every family is involved into bangle making from generations. And here this child is dreaming about becoming a motor mechanic, learning how to drive a car seems to be too realistic to be uh, like seems to be too uh, true to become real. So every second family in Firozabad is engaged in the business of bangle making. Firozabad is the center of India's glass blowing industry where generations after generations have been into the bangle making uh, activity. Another encounter with poverty. So this uh, chapter, The Lost Spring, is actually having two short stories. One that we've already read about Sahib. There it was about Rat Picker and the author's encounter with him and his state of poverty. Now here the author is encountering another boy whose name is Mukesh. And here also the situation is related to poverty. So let's see it. The people of Ferozabad involve their children in the bangle making industry without knowing that it is illegal for the children to go and work in such hazardous conditions where they are working with this glass, molding the glass. They are spending all their daylight in those dim dark areas which are not properly lit and not properly ventilated and they are molding the materials, molding the glass. They are working near uh, the furnaces which are having so high temperature. And this eventually is very uh, much, uh, you know, influ uh, kind of creating a problem for the health because most of the people are losing their eyesight because of such conditions. And still, the families here, the adults here are taking their children along with them to work in these industry because they are, more like many of them in the Ferozabad, they are unaware about the fact that this is illegal for the children to do. So the people of Ferozabad involve their children in the bangle making industry without knowing that it is illegal for children to work in the glass furnaces with high temperature in dingy cells without air and light. If the law is enforced, almost 20,000 children will be out of the hot furnace improperly uh, ventilated. Day, uh, areas where they work day and night often losing the vision often losing the brightness of their eyes that is this is the impact on their eyesight many of them tend to lose their eyesight working in such terrible conditions and imagine children subjected to working in these conditions so Mukesh proudly announces that his house is being rebuilt and he you know himself volunteers he himself goes ahead and asks the author that whether she wants to accompany him to his house. So the author agrees. And while they are moving to his house, the author realizes that the condition of, the, uh, of that place was not too good. 
the houses were improperly built many of the houses lacked proper structure windows were hardly there the doors were not properly built they were crumbling walls there were garbage all around and while she was going through all this she was witnessing all this suddenly she stops in front of the house and that's when she realizes that it was mukesh's house which was similar to the other houses she has just crossed and that house was also incomplete with the roof on one side was just having the dried dead grass and the other side was still not done so mukesh proudly announces that his house is being rebuilt and volunteers to take the author home they walk down stinking lanes choked with garbage they passed houses that were small and dirty constructions with wobbly doors and with no windows where families of humans and animals coexist in a primitive manner so such were the condition of the houses and the locality where mukesh lived and one more thing was there that in those houses which were again improperly built there were a number of family members who were living there and animals were also there they enter so the house the condition of uh, mukesh's house i've already described that it was half built where the roof was just done on one side and it was just made of the dried uh, leaves right and the dried grass rather and then suddenly mukesh opens the door and there when she enters she sees that there was a young little girl like young not little girl but young lady who was sitting there and there were platters plates in front of her where lot of chopped vegetables were kept and she was cooking food or cooking dinner for the entire family and her eyes seemed to be filled with smoke now here it means eyes filled with smoke means because she was continuously cooking on that firewood stove so the smoke that was coming out of it has filled her eyes while cooking and therefore it has been said that the high that her eyes were filled with smoke so they enter a half built shack shack is a hut one part of which is thatched that is covered with the dead grass where a frail young woman that is a weak young woman was cooking the evening meal for the whole family she is the wife of mukesh's elder brother though not much older in years she has the respect of a bahu that is a daughter in law she veils her face when mukesh's father enters the god given lineage so while uh, you know the family enters the three men that is mukesh was already there and then comes mukesh's uh, father and the uh, and his elder brother enters the room and at that time this young lady just tries to cover her face a little more and at that time uh, another women come outside and that and she is the elderly woman she is the grandmother of mukesh and she just looks at the author and she tells her that you know um, this is the condition of our life and we've been living there since generations uh, you know my son uh, that is mukesh's father he was he's worked really hard he was a tailor he was a then a bangle maker and then this is what he has achieved by just trying to make a house but that also he was unable to do unable to rebuild his house and she's saying that you know she's even seen her own husband devoting his entire life working really hard in the bangle making industry and that man like his uh, her husband the grandmother's husband had lost his eyesight so the grandmother just you know keeps complaining and talking about their family conditions and she says that it seems that this is a god given lineage that is our family it's like an inherited occupation every generation is involved into bangle making and she thinks that whether this thing will ever come to an end or not so mukesh's father has toiled hard all his life so he's worked really hard all his life first as a tailor and then as a bangle maker still the poor fellow has been unable to renovate his house or send his two sons to school all he could manage to do was to teach them what he knows about the art of bangle making mukesh's grandmother has seen her husband go blind with the dust from polishing the glass bangles she believes in destiny can a god given lineage be ever broken she implies 
here she means that born in the caste of bangle makers because all her generation she remembers has been involved into bangle making so she feels that whether can anything of this happen where she would feel that yes this lineage this occupation of bangle making for her family would come to an end so born in the caste of bangle makers they have seen nothing but bangles of various colors lying everywhere lost spring now in the dark hutments next to the line of flames of flickering oil lamps sit young little boys and girls along with their parents that is their fathers and mothers wielding or joining the pieces of those colorful glasses into circles of bangles their eyes are more adjusted to the dark because they've been used to working in those conditions day and night and that too for generations from so many years from being children from being a child they've been working there so therefore it is being said that they are now they are more used to the dark than to the light which is outside they often end up losing their eyesight before they become adults the author then introduces or notices a young girl uh, in that crowd whose name is savita who was draped in a pink colored dress and she was sitting beside an elderly woman and they both were doing the same thing that is wielding the bangle making the glass bangle so her hands move like a machine so here her means savita so the author says that savita's hand uh, was moving it seems as if they were mo moving like a machine because she was jo she was doing she was making those bangles molding those bangles so efficiently it seemed as if it was a mechanical process annie's wonders you know when she looks at the child welding the bangles making the bangles so you know the author thinks that does this little girl even realizes the importance of the bangles that she's been making from so many years now she realizes that this bangle these colorful bangles that she is making is actually considered sacred in the indian tradition especially for the married women and one day she probably even if she does not know that one day she will realize when she herself is going to become a bride and wear those red colored bangles that she makes just like the women the elderly women who are sitting next to her and making that bangle but the author says that when she will become a bang uh, she will become a bride so she would realize not just realize the importance of making that bangle and import so no, she would not just realize the importance of the sacredness of that bangle for a bride but she would also be very hopeful considering that she is starting a new life she is now a bride but eventually she will going to lose that hope that light that happiness just like the elderly women who were sitting next to savita and she was also wearing those bangles because when she became a bride so annie's wonders if she understands the sanctity of the bangles for indian women the sad irony will suddenly dawn upon her she will become a bride like the old women sitting beside her in a voice drained of joy the old lady tells her that you know she is been working day and night so hard but she till date she has not enjoyed even up one time she has not enjoyed a proper meal so the old lady tells the author that she has not enjoyed even one full meal in her entire lifetime but to this what does her husband reply that yes the, she may not have enjoyed a proper meal uh, uh, in, in her lifetime but at least all of this hard work that they have done together could be seen in the house that they have because they have made a house they own a house which again was not the case with many of the families who were living in ferozabad who were involved in the bangle making so daring not a part of growing up one wonders if mukesh's father has achieved what many may have failed to achieve in their lifetime that is of making uh, of having their own house he has a roof over his head the cry of not having money can be heard in every household of ferozabad nothing has changed over the years and years of hardship have killed all hopes and dreams the author asks a group of young men to organize themselves into a cooperative so the author here comes up uh, to these young little boys and she suggests that why don't you start a cooperative work as a group right but then she learns that 
Uh, there are, you know, uh, bureaucrats, politicians. There are some really influential people, and the middlemen, the sahukars, who have actually, you know, uh, kind of trapped their families by giving them some money, some loan, and the families, their elders have taken the money, thinking that once they'll make a good fortune, that is. Once they learn a good amount of money from the bangle making thing, they would repay the loan to the middleman, to the sahukar, or to the money lender. But this never happened. They were never able to earn that much amount of money so that they could repay the loan. And eventually, they caught trapped into this uh, vicious cycle, this cruel cycle of indebtedness. And this is exactly you know the, uh, why you know the author realizes that these young little boys are also. Uh, you know, carrying the burden of that uh, debt uh, that their parents have taken, that vicious cycle, and this is the reason why they are being exploited by these people who are there, and therefore they cannot think of forming a cooperative because if they do, then they would be dragged by the police and they would be put behind bars. So she learns the horrific truth that even if they get organized. they are taken to jail for doing something illegal and are beaten up there is no leader among them the author finds two distinct world in ferozabad now one is because the family is living in that condition of poverty reason being because everyone from generations have been involved into bangle making and the other is because the state of poverty is because of the middlemen the sahukars the bureaucrats the influential people the policemen who are not letting these people come out of their state of poverty in fact they are the ones who are exploiting them so there are the states of poverty because of these two reasons so one is the exploited family caught in the vortex of poverty and the stigma of the caste in which they were born the other is a vicious circle of those who exploit them so first is because of the caste they are born in they are continuously into this bangle making occupation right and the other is because of the other people who are in uh, there who are exploiting them that is the middlemen the sahukar the bureaucrats the law maker the policeman etc and they all are exploiting these people and they are never letting them uh, come out of the state of poverty so these have created such a burden that a child accepts this as naturally as its father as his father did to do something else would mean to dare and daring is not a part of growing up a ray of hope but irrespective of the situation of the family's condition in ferozabad here the author realizes that mukesh is still assertive because he again repeats that i want to become a motor mechanic i want to learn to drive a car and i know that there is a garage which is a little far off from my place but i do not mind that i can go i will walk down to that place and i am going to learn how to drive so this child wants to dare he want he has that hope that he is going to accomplish something different so the author is filled with joy when she finds that mukesh thinks differently that is he is wanting to dare he is dreaming something else the boy is filled with hope his dream of being a motor mechanic is still alive in his eyes so irrespective of his family conditions the financial burden and everyone getting involved into the generation old bangle making this child is not feeling burdened by that occupation and he wants to do something different he is dreaming of being something different and that is motor mechanic he wants to become a motor mechanic he wants to learn to drive a car so he is willing to dare and he is asked mukesh if he also dreams of flying a plane so now when ani sees that yes this guy this uh, boy is hopeful and this boy wants to dare to become something else so therefore she just says that okay you want to drive a car but have you do you think that you want to fly a plane so at this point the child is a little embarrassed why because probably he has never seen a plane uh, flying over ferozabad all that he had seen were cars on the busy streets of his city so mukesh replies in negative he is content to dream of cars as only few planes fly over ferozabad 
so here we come to the end of our summary of the second story which was about mukesh now to summarize both the stories to conclude what is different in both the stories and similar in both stories let's uh, uh, let's talk on this so the similar situation in both the stories is that the, they both the boys be it sahib or mukesh they are living in you know very poor conditions where basic necessities of life are not there they are they are living in abject poverty but the difference here is that sahib is a rag picker and you know he is content with what he is doing in searching uh, the uh, he, in searching uh, the garbage like he is okay and he is satisfied with uh, do, uh, being a rag picker just like his parents just like his uh, older generations whereas here uh, mukesh he wants to dream differently he wants he is more daring why because he has a courage to break that uh, generation old uh, family generation old uh, occupation of being into the bangle making industry right he wants to do something different he is more daring is more courageous on the other hand sahib he was a rag picker and later when he become he starts working at the tea stall there he is not really happy so he is okay he is continuing the work there irrespective of the fact that he's earning a regular uh, money and he's getting more uh, more money and uh, better wages still his independence was not there he lost his freedom there he was working under a master but here we see that uh, sahib uh, mukesh is wanting to be his own master right there also sahib wanted to be his own master but that is at the cost of a better job he wanted to be a rag picker but he was okay working with it because it was giving him more money but he did not enjoy that whereas here mukesh is enjoying and he is not enjoying really because he hasn't achieved it because mukesh is happy he is hoping is dreaming something different so here we conclude both the stories so we've done the narration we've done the summary and now it's time to test ourselves first with the ncert questions and then the cbse questions so let's start